By the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful greeting to all of my colleagues who are interested in learning medical research and uh, welcome to research school for medical professionals. And it's Muhammad Laude and really it's my great pleasure to start and to uh, demonstrate the series of lectures on medical research, about statistics and scientific publication. And this course is going to be in series. Uh, it's the first lecture I'm going to uh, just to give you the outline of the course and the moreover, I'm going to teach you the major disciplines that you have to know to start and to conduct your medical research co correctly. Uh, before starting, I'd like to share with you a short story of mine that tells my initial experience in research. And I think in 2008, my professor, Dr. Yasser Osman, asked me to collect the hospital experience in certain kind of tumor, which is urethral tumor, upper tract urethral tumor. And really at that time, I didn't have uh, enough experience in research and then after I worked like for one year and I collected more than 150 patients I stuck in my research I did many mistakes really I didn't do a literature review I didn't do a research proposal I didn't read about the researchers the research that uh, has been done before uh, and uh, eventually after collecting the data I was I wasn't able to <clears throat> to analyze the data I wasn't able to write manuscript and uh, finally I didn't publish you know any articles or any research from this data so really it it was my motivation at that time to learn more about medical research so uh, and then fortunately after one or two years Dr. Ahmed Shukir, the editor-in-chief, Arab Journal of Urology, and the former director of Nephrology and Urology Center, and he is my professor in urology, started this kind of courses in Mansoura University in Urology Center. Uh, every time I teach medical search, I mention this person, this person who started this kind of courses in, in Egypt, and he taught all of us. Uh, and I will not be shy to tell you that and the, after the first course, I got not more than 10 or 15 percent of the whole industry. And then I decided to attend the course for a second time, and then I got 25 or 30 percent. I decided to attend the course for the third time to just to get more than 50 percent. And then to learn about research, and then I started to teach research. Uh, by the way, teaching is a good tool for learning. And when I remember three years ago, I conducted this course weekly and between the courses, the whole week, I was reading about research to teach in the next lecture. And then I was able to uh, conduct it and to organize it in two days and then three days. And in the last three years, I, uh, I gave this course for nine times and I couched more than uh, like 150 medical professionals and I wrote more than 20 articles. Uh, 15 of them are accepted and are online and the, the, the remaining is still in press and under review. This is just uh, an introduction and uh, just to warm, uh, warm up your mind and uh, let's start. This is the, the whole map uh, of, the, uh, of the presentation. I'm going to start with uh, first with introduction and then I'm going to introduce for you the research school for medical professionals, which is the, uh, the, our course. And then we're going to uh, identify or give a definition for research. And then uh, those are the major disciplines of the medical search. Medical search itself and the basic biostatistics and the SBSS, which is the a statistical program. And finally, the scientific publication and then this is the question that uh, has been asked or I have been asked uh, many times for the colleagues how do we start research let's start okay so uh, there is too much concern uh, nowadays about evidence missed the medicine as you know and uh, it's not really uh, one approach. You have to know about evidence-based methods. It's not one approach, it's interdisciplinary approach. You see here, the interdisciplinary approach, the from research, from clinical expertise, and uh, you know, uh, also with respect to the patient values and circumstances. So here, for example, if something that can be applied in the uh, United States or in Europe, sometimes cannot be applied in another country, in Arab countries, for example, in view of uh, different cultural, different religion, different thought, you know. So you have to respect the patient religion, education, uh, the community, the cultural issues, all of those should also put in consideration. And uh, so uh, a question for you, what is the aim of evidence-based medicine? 
it ends to guide the clinical practice, correct? So we have to rationalize the clinical, uh, the decisions now. If you have a decision, if it should be rationalized, it should be based on evidence. So here you can see the research evidence is the backbone of the evidence-based medicine. And if the three, if the three circles meet together, which is the best evidence-based practice, correct? So the combination, at least now, are going to just hold this circle or this part. The combination of research evidence and clinical expertise gives, what do you think? Correct, the guidelines. For example, in urology, we have the European guidelines, we have the American guidelines. So, so what also, what, what is the aim or what the value, what the importance of guidelines? If I have a debate with one of my colleagues, uh, so what's the standardization? We have to go or return it back to the guidelines. So if you, uh, if I, if I didn't give uh, post-operative antibiotics for for a certain disease, and uh, one asked me why didn't you, why didn't you give? I went, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say to him, the guidelines say such and such and such. If I didn't uh, ultrasound or CAT scan or CT or whatever for a certain disease and somebody asked me why you didn't do I'm, I'm just I'm going to say to him the recent guidelines tell some, such and such you know and I think also in each specialty in your specialty you have the guidelines as we have my question to you so from where the guidelines come from okay so if I return it back okay this is a combination of yes research evidence and clinical expertise but the, really, the guidelines, you know, uh, come from the highest quality of the the research. So, in each guideline, if you, for example, for urology, it it, it has many chapters, and the, the first chapter, for example, the bladder tumor, the expertise from the of the bladder tumor all over the world, and those the expertise it choose from the from the literature, from the whole research, the higher quality of information. This, this is the pyramid of the research studies. I'm going to teach it later, but it's not my concern now. But at least you have to know that all the research in the literature uh, put in this pyramid. And the, those, the, the lower quality of information, which you, those, the case series, case report, expert opinion here, and the highest level is the randomized clinical trials. And then further studies can be done on the randomized clinical trials to yield systematic reviews and meta analysis. And those, they choose the, the expertise, choose the highest quality to put the, the guidelines. For that reason, we make the research to what? Yeah, to, for, to, to enrich the guidelines, to enrich the literature. And if you look to the, this uh, figure, it shows an exponential increase in the open access articles published in the last 10 years. So this is 2007 and this is just for to, to 2014, we are now in the beginning of 2018. There is an exponential increase in, in research and in our, our published articles and subsequently the necessity of uh, more knowledge, more courses in research is demanding. Although it, is, it could be a little attractive to say to the people, start to research, to enrich the guidelines, to, to enrich the literature, but I found it's more attractive, at least in the beginning of research, to say do research to blast your CV, which is really true. Which, you know, it, it was me in the beginning, you know, I started the research to blast my CV in the beginning. This is my, my resume or CV in 2013, this is my resume now, it's different. If you apply for a residency, uh, if you apply for a fellowship, if you apply for uh, further training, if you apply for, uh, for promotion, for academic career, you have to have publication. You have to know about research. This is really a little, little bit attractive in the beginning, but after a while, I feel like now I want to make a research for the literature, not for mine. Okay, so the question to you, do you do or do we do research as we hope? or in another way, what are the limitations for research? If that is, uh, you just use this pyramid, put this pyramid in your mind and put you, yes, on the top. Researcher. So uh, you have to know that research is a, a, 
uh, frustrated is your rigorous process. It takes time, uh, it takes effort. You have to sacrifice some time from from your uh, you know from your activities to conduct research. Uh, so you have to be energetic. You have to be uh, enthusiastic. You sh you have to have power, you know, to conduct research. So, and then here the data and patience. If uh, you don't have the materials, the cement, the iron, the blocks, you can't simply construct a building. The same, you if you have you have to have data or patience. Although are going to teach you to. Uh, to work on the already published articles to make many reviews and the systematic reviews, but still the data and patients are mandatory to conduct research. And then finally, you have to uh, to have um, cooperation from the organization and the institution. Uh, probably you may ask for approval of your search or probably a fund yeah, from a teamwork, a biostatistician. So you have to work in a team and the, your organization also has to be cooperative uh, with you. So here it is my concern in the in the core, in the core of this pyramid, their research knowledge. Yes, research knowledge. It was my problem in the beginning to to know about research. Uh, I went to the uh, the library and the, the list book at the time for uh, for research. It was like at least three hundred uh, or four hundred pages, and the same also for the uh, bios biostatistics. So although they are good uh, resources, but it seems that those resources have been written by you know expertise in research. Uh, we are, you know, we are interested in research, but we are not expertise in research. You know, I am a clinician like you. Uh, I don't have, I have a full-time job. I have uh, clinics, I have uh, duties, and I have on calls. We are staffed in, in our clinical work. So our aim just, you know, to publish three or four articles per year. Okay, so we need more hands-on. We need the least, you know, least amount practical knowledge to conduct research. In view of presence of all or the large amount of research with less practical courses, I have, you know, thought about, you know, yes, the search course to for medical professional. Uh, I have decided to uh, teach medical research. What's new in our course? So our course. Uh, we're going to deliver the least amount of knowledge with the maximum benefits. Really true, because it is a simple clinician to clinician guide. Simply. Okay. So, and then uh, this course is integrated. So, in, 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 my, in my teaching, I found many people who have a perfect knowledge in medical research. And then they don't have enough knowledge in biostatistics and uh, in publication. I found another people who have a good knowledge only on biostatistics. I found some people who have knowledge on medical research about statistics and then they can't publish. So this course is integrated and those are the disciplines that you have to know to conduct or to start your medical research. And then this course is applied. So our going just to give you the or transmitted the theory to practice, we have hands on workshops on what? On PubMed, on and a note on citation manager on SBSS how to submit your uh, your articles so we have hands on and we are going to give you the recent soft software tools as i explained if you look to the research like 15 or uh, 20 or 25 years ago uh, research has been has been changed you have to be familiar with the online research you have to familiar with citation manager you have to familiar with online uh, public online submission you know the computer internet uh, you know changed many many things in our life and finally it is a step by step teaching strategy i found in my research it is hard for the even for the medical professionals which are the highest level of education to ingest all of the information at a time I found it's practical to divide the, the research knowledge into levels. So level one, <coughs> level two, level three. Level one, level one for the basic, which is the level, basic level the, uh, the, for the beginners. So after you ingest all of this information, you will ingest easily the second level. And then after you ingest all this, the, the basic and the intermediate or level one or level two, it's okay to go to the advanced. So don't go in depth, you know, uh, suddenly with the research knowledge it will be hard for you but just you know take the take the knowledge step by step so uh, so the, the, the question now what is the what's research 
Okay, if you go online, you will find many uh, definitions really for search, but this, this kind of definition is simple and uh, it's going to help you to understand not only what's research but also the, the, the steps of research. Number one, it is a systematic approach. When I say systematic, it is, I think it is understood. It is, you have to go in a certain pathway. It is uh, in steps. My, uh, my advice, or it is one of the uh, common mistakes for the, for the researchers, they jump to the, the, the second step or third step without fulfilling the first step. So research is a systematic approach. And this is the second lecture, which is a map. You have to have a map, okay, for your research. So it is a step by step. And my advice to you, not to go to the second step unless you fulfill completely the previous step. And then to answer a question or to solve a problem. This is a very common mistake. If, for example, if you did a research for a couple of years and then after, uh, after you finished it, submit it to the journal and then the reviewer send it to you, look, this is a systematic review, for example, for about the same topic and the, your research has been published many times, nothing in you in your research. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't work because you, you, you did your research. Unless you have a question, unless you, you are going to solve a problem, there is no need for your research. And this is the, the, the importance of literature you that we are going to speak about it now. And then I'm going to tell you something to, is going to help you in the acceptance of your publication. If you can't, if it's hard enough to generate a new theory, which is a little bit hard for the clinician, at least you have to work on to validate the existing existing knowledge. This that's true. You have to you know decrease the issues, decrease the problems, the the the, the conflict in the literature. You have to work on those. So the best research if i if you ask me the best what's the best research is the, the the research that is going to generate a new theory uh, if you can it's perfect if you can't work on please on validating the existing knowledge